There is a noticeable theme in the Quran where every time you read about the Pharaoh of Egypt, there is a particular trait that comes to the forefront every single time that played a major role in his demise, in his decline. What is the trait? Arrogance. Every time the Pharaoh is mentioned in the Quran, the description of arrogance is tailed with it side by side. Allah Almighty said, Inna fir'awna ala fil ard. Indeed, the Pharaoh was haughty on the land, arrogant. Wa inna fir'awna la alim fil ard. The Pharaoh was arrogant on the land. Wa stakbara huwa wa junooduhu fil ard bi ghayr al haq. The Pharaoh and his soldiers were arrogant on the land without right. Inni uzdu bi rabbi wa rabbikum min kulli mutakabbir la yu'minu bi yawm al hisab. I seek refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant person who does not believe in the day of judgment. Every time the Pharaoh is mentioned, his arrogance is underscored, which shows you that there are certain things that expedite the decline of nations and civilizations and individuals, by the way. And one of those characteristics that gives you a very short lifespan is arrogance. It's from the sunnah of Allah, the way of Allah, that whenever a nation, civilization, or an individual, or a family, or a business shows arrogance, Allah has to take them out. Why? Because balance is lost in the eyes of the arrogant person. You don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for who he is, and you don't see people for who they are. You don't see yourself for who you are. You see the world how you are, and that is arrogant, and nothing can change that other than a humbling defeat. So Allah does not tolerate arrogance on the land. Fast forward to the pharaohs of the 21st century. The Israeli politicians them say are saying what has brought us to our miserable state today is arrogance. Gerald Steinberg, an Israeli political scientist, he says that the singular trait that is behind the existential political threat to the Israeli system is arrogance. Gideon Levy, an Israeli journalist, he said behind everything that we see today lies arrogance. He says, we believe that we can kill and steal and incarcerate and punch people's faces and gouge out their eyes. We feel that we are perfectly allowed to remove children from their beds and carry out a genocide in Gaza and the blockade. And the fact that he says, we are still talking about flattening Gaza shows the world that we haven't learned a thing and arrogance is here to stay. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu therefore does not tolerate arrogance on the land. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Allah Almighty, he will give victory to a just nation even though they may be disbelievers. Allah will not give victory to the unjust nation, even if they are Muslims. I will leave you with this message. There is a lot of talk about what we can do for Gaza. And indeed, most speakers will taper off their talk by giving you a list of things to do for the people of Gaza. And this is no doubt essential. There is, I think, another dimension of the discussion we need to share. That is, what have the people of Gaza done for us? And how we should be grateful to them. And that is why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna ashkara nasi lillahi ta'ala ashkaruhum linnas. The most grateful of people to Allah are those who show most gratitude to the people. So let us trigger and activate this act of worship for a moment. We say to the children of Gaza before anyone else, thank you, Jazakumullahu khairan, we salute you. We have seen how your six-year-olds are standing over the dying bodies of their blood brothers as they say to them, brother, say la ilaha illallah, you're dying. Say la ilaha illallah, six years old, how did he pull that one up? We saw the young boy wrapped from head to toe because of burns, saying to his father, whose injuries are less than him, Father, be strong, don't despair. This is our land. Who taught him that? Those children of Gaza showed us that many of us who think that we are men are in fact still children. And they've shown us how children can in fact be men. Thank you, children of Gaza. We say to the mothers of Gaza, thank you, may Allah Almighty bless those wounds of yours that have delivered the miracles of the 21st century that we are witnessing today. We say thank you. May Allah Almighty bless your tarbiyah and your nurturing and your upbringing. This is in fact what they are decking in Gaza. It is the spirit that you have fostered in the hearts of the Muslims. We say thank you. And to the elders of Gaza, we say thank you. You have shown us how beautiful it is when aqeedah, belief in Allah, is transferred from the inks on the pages of books to the blood that flows through veins and arteries. Thank you, jazakumullahu khair. And we say to the doctors, the physicians, and the paramedics of Gaza, thank you. As you work long hours, you now live in your hospitals. And you have seen with your eyes that which no mountain could bear, let alone a human being. When you thought it couldn't get any worse, your children could 
come to visit you in the wards, but not as alive children. They come to you in body bags, and you hug the body bag, and you cry. Then you stand up, and you bury your pain, and you wipe away the tears, and you continue your duty to the Muslims there in Philistine. We say thank you to the doctors and the physicians, to the journalists who know that they are now on the IDF hit list because of the crime of exposing the crime of the occupier. 50 of them killed to date, we say thank you. To Wa'il al dahduh and his likes, whose family were killed live on air. He goes down to the hospital, weeps over his wife and children. The very next day, he's back on TV saying, I have a duty towards Winston. How did you pull that one off? We say thank you, Jazakallahu Khairan. To the women of Gaza, we say thank you. We saw you burying your children, then you raised your hands rather than complain. Complaining at Allah, you say, Oh Allah, continue taking from our blood till you are pleased. To the men of Gaza, we say thank you for showing us that a people who believe that death is not the end can never be defeated. Thank you for helping us understanding verses of the Quran that we previously did not understand until we saw you. Thank you for removing from the hearts of two billion Muslims around the world the fear of any human being but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us at a time when we thought that the Ummah of Islam had died, you have just shown us that the Ummah has a pulse, not just that, the Ummah is brimming with life. And from all of the generations of the Muslims to walk this earth in recent times, by Allah, this is the greatest and finest of all Muslim generations. And time will show that this prediction and this assessment is true.